James Christie had his first permanent sale room, this lovely um, house here. Mm -hmm. It's no longer there. It's actually where the, um, the RAC club is in Pall Mall. This is this fine street called Pall Mall. And James Christie started holding sales in this uh, building in, in the 1760s. And then we actually moved to King Street. It was James Christie's son, who was also a James, hmm. moved us to King Street in 1823. And this is a, a very early photograph of what King Street used to look like. <laughs> this King Street was refurbished and re slightly remodelled. And then it was just the only thing that was left after 1941 was the facade behind this photograph. There's actually nothing. It's just a an empty space. Mm -hmm. But when it was refurbished, we kept the Portland stone and, and the Portland um, porch, which is still there, it's the same one today. So I've got out for you a few examples of house sales that we've had over the years. Stowe House, this is a very early catalogue that actually has a, a frontispiece in it. <laughs> and the Stowe House sale took place in 1848, and it was the Duke of Buckingham. and he ran into financial difficulties. Because he was a gambler, yeah. um, and he bought masses of um, furniture for his house, but one of the things that actually sent him over the edge was he, he actually refurbished a suite of rooms at Stowe House, because Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were visiting. That was in 1845. He spent so much money on this <laughs> refurbishment that he actually almost bankrupted himself. So needless to say, in 1848, he had to sell his entire house and um, this was a huge sale, this is a 40 day sale, Aww. 40 days, yeah. it was extraordinary, it started in, in the August and it actually finished in the October because it was, wasn't a continuous 40 days but over that, 40, that period it finished in October and the most amazing thing about it, this is very English actually but we have something called the National Trust over here and the National Trust allows individuals to go and visit houses and gardens. Now this is way before the National Trust ever um, appeared and this is in Buckingham. It's about an hour outside of London and there's a story in the Times where the world and his wife got into any kind of vehicle that they could. Some got the train, some got coaches, any old charabang that they could possibly get onto. They left London they took a bit of a picnic with them and they actually picnicked in the grounds of Stowe House. Now the Times reporter was agog, aghast and absolutely horrified that the hoi polloi from London felt that they could go out into the countryside and enjoy the Duke of Buckingham's home. It caused an absolute hoo-ha at the time of the sale. <laughs> Massive sale, absolutely um, um, amazing sale and it realised um, just shy of £78,000 back in 1848, which today has to be, you know, probably, I don't know the exact, I've got it on here, but it, it has to be £40, £50 million pounds in today's um, price. I've actually put the Earl of Kerry out as well, um, and this, this is going back to 1778, um, and this was a huge collection of furniture and pictures from his house in Portman Square. A lot of Christie's clients were London based. And the Earl of Kerry um, was a bit of a character, so I believe. And he, um, he, he furnished his house. Bearing in mind at this period of time it was men that furnished houses. Mm. Women mm. didn't have an awful lot to do with the furnishing of houses. It was the men mm. that furnished their houses. Mm. And he furnished his house. He, he bought a brand new house. He was a great um, a fan of Inson Mayhew furniture. He'd, he'd decorate a whole suite of rooms and then six months later he, he decided oh I've had enough of those colours or that style or and he sold everything so although we don't usually sell new furniture to all extents and purposes the furniture that we sold from the Earl of Kerry was new it was only six months old but he'd got bored with the colour or the shape or whatever so he kept Christie very busy for a, a short period of time selling an awful lot of very fine furniture that was relatively new Another big sale in the 1880s was the Duke of Hamilton. And again, as you can see, this is a huge sale. 
This was um, works of art from his um, home in Scotland. Hamilton Palace was just outside Glasgow. Alas, it's no longer uh, extant today. It's been knocked down. Um, but it's one of our early sales that we actually have illustrations. And these are uh, auto, what's called autotype illustrations. So we're actually beginning to illustrate our catalogues. Very expensive. This is a very, very expensive process to do in the 1880s. This catalogue at the time would have cost an awful lot of money to produce. And again, that was another great sale of ours. Oh, and Dumfries. I got Dumfries out because this shows you how much work we actually do on, on certain houses. Dumfries House, again in Scotland, and the Marquis of Butte's home that had, has the most uh, amazing Chippendale furniture in it. It's mm. just stuffed the gills of beautiful, beautiful furniture. And when Prince Charles realised the house was up for sale, he started uh, a campaign to save it for the nation. So we went through the whole pro Christie's went through the whole process of visiting the house, valuing the collection, preparing the catalogue, photographing the lots. This was a two volume set that I think was going to sell for about fifty pounds um, at the time, which you know is a fairly hefty amount for a for a sale catalogue. And then we didn't the sale didn't happen. Mm. The furniture is still in situ and uh, so this is, this is now an inventory, this is a fine inventory of the collection as opposed to a sale catalogue. And I thought I'd finish off with a couple of non-house things, just in case you got bored with house things by then. And I've got a couple, um, I like to get um, sales that, that happen, that were the vendors were, were ladies, because the majority of sales we have are men. The majority of the buyers at the time were men, so it's nice to kind of try and balance it out with a few sales mm -hmm. of ladies. Although this is actually a very sad tale. This is um, the Madame du Barry sale. It took place in 1795. And Madame du Barry was um, the mistress of Louis XV. And alas, in 1793, Madame... Um, du Barry was uh, beheaded. She was actually caught by the authorities in Paris and uh, guillotined. And two years later, uh, when the, uh, the, the powers that be that were in France at the time, they needed money, so they decided to sell her collection of jewels. This is a very fine collection of jewels, and Christie was asked to sell her collection, <laughs> and it raised quite a lot of money. But very sad, the fact that she had already um, uh, died before the sale took place. So why did they kill her? Why was the reason? Oh, because of her connection with Louis the Fifteenth. Mm. You know, she was um, uh, bourgeois, um, mixed with royals, um, and she just got caught up in that whole terror that they called it in the 1790s when the um, revolution was taking mm. place. Uh, actually, without realising it, I've got another sale where the the main part of the sale has now died as well. I hadn't actually thought of it in that respect before. This is the Princess Diana dress mm. sale, um, which was an incredible sale held in New York. Uh, of her, well, her son decided to do that. He, he did. William, fact, yeah. he, he did. In fact, there's a lovely mm -hmm. um, uh, frontispiece here that says that the inspiration for this wonderful sale comes from just one person, our son William, mm -hmm. and that was in um, June 1977. Uh, and this sale took place in New York. It was a black tie affair. Mm -hmm. There's some lovely photographs uh, of what well, you can see, it's black yeah. tie. The, the lovely photographs of um, our chairman, uh, Lord Hinlip, greeting the princess as she comes into Christie's in New York. And it was a fabulous, fabulous sale. This was in uh, 1997, which is why this catalogue actually then became very expensive to buy. It was retailing at one point for about uh, two, two, uh, 250 pounds. Oh. <laughs> That's just a, an example of, of what we have done here. This is Mr. Christie himself <laughs> at the podium, mm -hmm. um, selling at a jewellery sale. He became very well known as a jewellery salesman, which is why he ended up getting the Madame du Barry oh. sale. And this is um, James Christie II. This is James Christie's son, who also became an auctioneer. We're here in the magic room where 
Everything happens with an octagonal light system. Thank you.